Good morning, welcome back to the 30 and 30, 30 vlogs in 30 days here on Our Morning Life. My name is Mike. This is Marty. She is our free Martin twin this year, and she gets the chance to be our bottle calf, at least for a little while. How are you, kiddo? How are you doing? You got an itchy nose? We're just trying to eat my pants. <laughs> she gets to hang out in the barn because she is a bottle calf, and she's a little shy. Hey, kiddo. Well, maybe not. Hi. How are you? <laughs> We're going to come back and take care of her in just a little while because while she gets to hang out, hi, hi I love you too. Yeah, you're so sweet. I know you're so sweet. Uh, while she gets to hang out here in the barn, which is heated and nice and very, very comfortable, she's got a lot of brothers and sisters and cousins and whatever else they are out in the pasture and the weather really isn't cooperating. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. Don't. <laughs> You're being silly. Okay, I gotta go. I gotta go. I got stuff to do. I got stuff to do, kiddo. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. <laughs> I gotta escape. She's chasing me. Alright, like I said, the weather is taking a turn for the worse. Uh, we do have some major storms on the way coming up in the next couple of days, and now we're catching basically a wraparound off of those storms. A little precursor to what we have coming up. So, because of that reason, there's snow on the ground. The wind is blowing and the temperature is dropping. And what that means for us is that it's time to go to work. We have a lot going on today, even though it is snowy and crappy outside. We have eight calves that all need to be taken care of and accounted for. And we're getting hay delivered today, hopefully, as long as the roads don't turn too bad. And we have a bottle calf to take care of. So those are our three big goals for today. Right now, we're going to head out here in this storm and take a look at every single calf that's on the ranch. I've made myself a little sheet. This is a part of Cattle Max. This is one of their worksheets that you can print out. And basically, this is a calf inventory. And what it does is show us exactly what we have. So we have eight calves on the ranch. Average age is five days old, four bulls, four heifers, zero steers. Gives us our ear tag numbers, our color and markings, and then our uh, mom's ear tag number as well. Number six is highlighted because that is our bottle calf. She is in the barn, so we don't need to find her outside. Trust me, I've searched for our bottle calf for hours and never found it because it was in the barn. This uh, sheet that you can get from Cattle Max is fully customizable. So you can have whatever information you may want on here, whether you want ear tags, maybe you want the age of the calf, um, any issues, notes, anything like that, you can totally customize and put on here. I'm a huge fan of Cattle Max just because I believe that knowledge is power and being able to know everything about your calves at a touch of a button makes a lot of sense. And when you can print it out, it's even easier. Also here in the Gator, we've got a new tool with us today, and this is our FLIR thermal imager. I doubt we're gonna be able to use it today because the snow is flying, but if we end up with a lost calf, this thing is very handy. This has been useful over the years, and I think has saved quite a few calves' lives, if I can get it out of the dang pouch. There it is, the FLIR thermal imager. We can view uh, up to about a mile away uh, we can find any missing calves just based on their heat signature. It's a piece of technology that I'm sure my father-in-law Gilbert never would have dreamed that we would use on the ranch. And I know a lot of ranchers that don't use anything even close to it. But from my background, search and rescue, that kind of stuff, we've used them in the past when I was in the military. Um, I got a hold of FLIR and I said, hey, does this have a livestock application? And this is what we came up with. Works great when you have to find something that you can't find. So we're gonna head out, speaking of finding things, and we are going to locate every calf on the ranch. We're going to put eyes on them. We're going to make sure that they're all okay.
Temperatures today are dropping. We started out today at about 45 degrees um, overnight, and now it's already down to about 29. Temperatures are dropping fast, snow is moving in, wind, of course, right along with it. And it's a pretty wet and heavy snow, which we need for the moisture, um, but it does get things a little bit sloppy too. Uh, and it's really bright out here. Our first stop is gonna be up here in our windbreak. I wanna make sure there's no calves up here. I did feed this morning, so we could have calves that were left by their moms to go and eat. All right, we do have one calf up here in this windbreak. And it is... Calf number seven. Now, if you remember from yesterday, calf number seven here was a trouble calf. She, he has, he or she, I can't remember now, he has a bit of scours going on. We gave him some medication. He seems to be doing okay. He's a little cold back here. Um, we're going to stick our fingers in, our, in his mouth, and that's going to give us a good indication of how he's doing. So his mouth is nice and warm, so I'm not really too worried about him. His mom, we know, is a little standoffish. She's a little shy, um, so she wants to keep her calf away from us. I'm sure this is just her attempt to do that. She's got him back here in the windbreak, so he's not out in the middle of a pasture somewhere where he's going to freeze to death or anything bad could happen to him. I think he's pretty safe here, so we're going to leave him and uh, count him as found. And he was actually the one that I was most worried about today, so I feel a whole lot better about this. I should have brought a pen with me. I could have marked them off on my little sheet as I went. Now we're going to head back towards the cow barn because any mom in her right mind would want to get her calf inside. I'm just saying that 130 may not be in her right mind right now. But uh, we're going to head over there and take a look and see what calves are in the, in the cow barn and just run through them really quick and hopefully we can make this really fast and account for every single calf. If we do get this big blizzard coming up next week, um, I'm actually toying with the idea of rather than mess around with you know checking calves and making sure everybody's okay, we may just go scoop up calves and put them all in the barn. Take them away from their moms for a day or so and just make sure they're safe. I'm still toying with that idea. Not sure if I'm going to do it or not, but it's definitely on my list. All right, moms are out here eating, which means there's probably some calves in the mix. We're going to, oh, there's one. Who's that? I saw one back in there. We'll catch it on the, back, on the way back around the other side. Um, there's 130. Hey, your calf is back there in the windbreak if you're worried about that kind of th thing. And here's a little one. This is number two. Number two is located. So we're up to two calves. Little cold cows here. Number two. one in here somewhere. There it is. I don't know which number that is. That is uh, number four, yeah, I think. So that's our third calf that we found. We're just going to swing right into the cow barn. Okay, so that was number two because here's number four. That's four calves. I didn't bring a pen with me and I probably should have. So we found number one, we found number two, we found seven, and have we found eight? I think that's the one that I haven't seen yet, is calf number eight. So let's do a little more searching for that one. Oh, wait a minute. I think I see it. Kind of tucked back here. 
in a way. Hey, baby. How you doing? What you doing back here? So she's hidden back here behind a riding lawnmower. Um, originally, we had all this stuff fenced off. The cows actually broke down that fence here recently, and we haven't had a chance to put it back up. So moms are stashing their, their babies back here. So I'm just going to get this calf out and back out kind of in the hair in the barn and out away from all this junk that's back here so that mom can find it a little easier. Come on. Oh, you're all wet. It's cold. Come on. Come on, let's get out. Come on. Let's go over here it's a little nicer. Yeah, there's all kinds of snow blowing in here. Let's put you over here in this corner, okay? I'm gonna fix your ear tag again because I kind of screwed up your ear tag when I put it in, didn't I? Okay. There you go. Okay. Oh, you're all pokey. <laughs> okay. I just moved her back over here. She's a little bit more out of the way and not trapped back there and all that good stuff in the corner. Okay, so all of our calves are now accounted for, but that doesn't mean much, especially when we could have a new calf at any time. So with the changes in barometric pressure or whether they're rising or falling just like my friend Matt the cows are affected by that change so we're gonna go do a real quick drive-through just to make sure hey number two how are you I'm not letting you break into the into the gator this time but you know what I will give you a piece of cake for being so good yep Good girl. Go, go have a baby. All right. Anyway, like I was saying, we're going to cruise out now, take a look around, just to make sure that no cows are out having a calf right about now. As you can see, visibility is pretty limited, but based on cow behavior and everything like that, um, if there is a cow that's out here having a calf in this kind of weather, I kind of know where they're going to be doing it. The longer, I guess, that you're on a place or, or working a, a specific piece of land, you do figure out that when the weather turns south and somebody has to have a calf and they're not going to do it in the barn, which would be the place to do it, I guess, at this point, um, where they're going to go. And really, it's just about getting out of the, the weather, getting out of the blowing snow and getting out of the wind is uh, I think the most mom's main priority. So we have a couple spots here on the ranch that we know that cows like to go to to have calves in bad weather. The first places we always check are the places that we created and those are the windbreaks like we checked and we found number seven earlier. Those are windbreaks that we've created on the ranch. The cows know where they're at. Um, they know if they need to seek shelter that's where they're gonna go. So usually what I'll try to do is try to check those first with really bad weather just to make sure so I can catch them as I'm kind of working my way around the ranch. Here's one right here. This is what we call the wooden windbreak. A number of times we've had cows have calves in those windbreaks, uh, even this year so far. There's been calves that have been born in those windbreaks. So that's our wooden windbreak. That's the first one we check. We do have another metal windbreak that's farther down. But now we're gonna check uh, some uh, natural draws and stuff like that where the cows can get down and kind of out of the wind. there's nothing down here today this is an area we consider uh, we call turtle bridge because we do have a number of turtles that will hang out down in that low spot also on this side we've got another draw where a lot of cows will come down to have calves so there's good and bad about uh, the low spots obviously like I said the cows are out of the wind they're a little happier little bit uh, out of the weather 
But at the same time, spring storms like this, they're usually wet storms. The snow is wet, it's heavy, it's melting fast, and the ground is warm. So then you end up with mud and soggy conditions. So a lot of times when cows do have cows down in those low spots, we actually try to get them out of those low spots if we can, um, so that the calf doesn't freeze down, doesn't get too cold, and doesn't get sick and possibly die. So while moms think they're doing them a favor by having a calf down in a low spot, sometimes it's not the best place in the world. We've tried to combat that a few times by uh, bringing straw with us and being able to put down straw around calves um, out here in the field. We have found that moms will either eat the straw or they'll move the calf anyway. So either way, um, sometimes our helping is just a matter of getting that calf loaded up and, and just getting it out of there. So over here is our last windbreak. It's a very popular place to have a calf. In fact, this is where number seven was born. Um, I mean, hundreds of calves have probably been born in this windbreak over the years, so a good place to check. Those are our major spots to check for cows. I'm sure that there are no cows out here. I can see uh, pretty much the rest of the pasture. It's pretty flat on this side. I don't see any cows out there, and uh, I think we're safe to head back home and take a little break before we get on to our next thing. Um, our hay is being delivered today. Ray is bringing us two more loads out of Missouri. Uh, one of them is here today, the other one hopefully within the next week or so. We don't have a whole lot of hay left to get us through the rest of spring and, well, winter and spring. In fact, this is all the hay that we have left on the ranch about 20 bales or so. Ray will bring us another 30, so that gets us a little bit farther along. Um, you start wondering, you know, why meat costs so much in, in drought areas like we are. Um, being able to feed these cows all winter long this year costs the ranch upwards. I, I, I don't know, I have an exact number, but I bet you we bought probably fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 worth of hay. Um, so it's, it's ridiculous to, to be able to, to make that happen. Um, weird thing is that the meat that we offer in the farm store is actually still lower priced than the meat that you can buy at the grocery store. So obviously, you know, somebody's making inflation a little bit higher than what it should be, um, or we're setting our prices too low, but either way. And if you can't get to the farm store, you can obviously um, order our beef, our pork online at ourwarminglife.com. You just have to be a Patreon member to do that. Prices are a little higher because there is shipping and handling, but if you want to support us, it's a great way to do it. And you can have yourself a steak. All right, I'm going to head inside, take a little break. We're still waiting for our hay to show up. And this evening, we will be getting out and feeding our bottle calf, Little Miss Marty, our free Martin. Stick around, guys. Hey, you're waiting for us, Peacock. Like, where have you been? All right, we're back in the Gator a little bit later on in the day. We still have to get in and bring you along as we feed Marty, our bottle calf, this afternoon. But I think I'm going to wrangle the kids together and have them help us with that. For now, we're heading out towards the hay yard where our second to last load of hay has just arrived from Missouri. So our truck driver who's been catching us on the backhaul has been keeping us supplied with hay. He's been basically bringing us a load whenever he goes through um, St. Louis for that area and picks up a load of hay on his way back this way. So it's worked out really good for us because we're really just paying for trucking in one direction, which has been, you know, kind of a godsend and saved us quite a bit of money in trucking costs. So Ray has just arrived. Looks like he's getting um, his straps off here in a few minutes. And then Jeff is going to get us the hay unloaded and uh, we'll be able to bring you along for that also. So here we go.
as far as I can see. I let them roll astray. It did not bother me. The sun is shining through every window pane. It's bathing you in light. So why should I complain? If there should ever. that fast but Jeff did a pretty good job and got it done quick so now we've got an extra 30 bales on the ranch we're feeding an average of about two bales per day so another 15 days worth of food for the cows not bad and I misspoke earlier we have two more loads coming out of Missouri so that'll be another 60 bales which will get us another 30 days on top of that so I think we're okay if we can get a break on this uh, on the weather get a little bit of moisture, um, get some of this grass growing out in the pasture, uh, which I think probably uh, if this blizzard hits and we get as much snow as they say we're going to get, and if it's a wet snow, it's going to be definitely a good head start towards where we need to be. So I am, since I'm out here anyway, I'm going to run out and check cows really quick and then uh, get back home, spend some time with the family, and uh, yeah, and then we'll get you out this evening to go out and feed our new bottle calf, Marty. So the hay is here, a little bit of a, uh, you know, a relief that it is. Uh, like I said, two more loads on the way, and uh, hopefully that'll get us set. So I will check back in with you in just a few. Foreman here. It's almost 7 p.m. on the Great Plains of Wyoming. This is Mackenzie. How Hi. old are you now? I'm 11. You're 11 years old. That means when we started YouTube, how old were you? I can't do math. You can't do math. <laughs> I was in second grade, I think, or like you first. Were, you were in first grade. It was 2017 when we started YouTube. And you made a video a long time ago about taking care of chickens, mm -hmm. but she has grown as a person. And tonight, you're going to be taking care of this year's bottle cow. Marty. <laughs> her name is Marty. She is our free Martin heifer. Mm -hmm. And what do we need to do for her tonight? We need to bottle feed her. We need to bottle feed her, which means we need to make a bottle. Mm -hmm. Do you remember how to do that? Tell you what, every year I have to... I should write it down somewhere because every year I have to like retrain myself on how to do everything. Um, calving only comes around once a year, so a lot of times I have to go in back and look at books mm -hmm. and say, how do I do this? Or what, I, what do I need do to watch out look, for? Do you have to look at the Beef Cattle for Dummy book? Sometimes. Sometimes <laughs> I have to look at the Beef Cattle for Dummy book. And when it comes time to make a bottle, I have to go, oh, how do I make this again? I remember like water and milk replacer. Water and milk replacer. That's a good start. <laughs> let's, uh, let's start there. And, and a blender. <laughs> and a blender. This is what we call our calf station. Um, it's got pretty much everything we need for calves. We've got medications, we've got uh, bottles, we've got milk replacer right down here. So let's get started with our, let's start here. 
Blender. Blender. What do we need? What do we need in here? Water. Water. Fill it up with water, and we want warm water, right? Warm. So let's go and get some water. Luckily, we've got water right in the shop inside Mom's the grow micro, room the micro. and micro green nursery. All right. Let's get you some water. So fill it up about uh, half full with water. Right about there. Right about there. Right about there. That's enough. <laughs> cool. All right. Watch yourself. Okay. Put that on there. Something like that. All right. <laughs> Down here we keep our milk replacer, which is basically powdered milk. So you need a full scoop of that stuff. Oh, there's little things in here. Yeah, that's for the goats. That's the goat milk replacer. We need the cow milk. Replacer. Why did we get cow? Oh, for Jack and Rose. Okay. Dump that in there. There you go. Throw that back in. Close that up. And keep the mice out. Or cats or whatever else. Oh, things. Things. Alright, let's put our lid on. And push a button. Any button? I don't care. Try one. <laughs> what happen? Okay. Oh, okay. Did that make you jump? Yeah. Okay, try it again. I don't know. Let's take a look. What's it look like? Um, see, it looks like milk. Looks like I'm not short enough to see it. Yeah, here, you hold on to this for a second because I'll pour it into the. Oh, are you singing? <laughs> Cameraman. Cameraman. All right, we're going to pour this in here. Yum, yum, yum. Cabs love this. And then we'll top it off with a little bit more warm water. Okay. There we go. Now, the cow, the cow can't drink it like this, right? Um, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> just soak it up. <laughs> just like a straw? Just like, sure. <laughs> maybe we should try one of these. Snap that on there. And a little twisty twist. There you go. Go we'll feed your cow. She's mine? Yeah. <laughs> She's everybody's. She, she belongs to the world. The world. She's the world's calf. So people ask us, why do we bother with bottle calves? You can sell them. Um, you can do a number of different things with them. And bottle calves for us began a summer of learning on the ranch, not only for our kids, because it is very important for them to have chores and that kind of stuff, right, Kenzie? Mm, sure. Sure. It's also because we have visitors throughout the summer that visit the ranch, part of the Harvest Host program, and they come and stay on the ranch. And while they're here, they get to feed calves. They get to take care of other animals. But they get to essentially do what Kenzie is doing right now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> tip it up. There you go. She's so tiny. She's very tiny. She's like, very, very hungry. Like, Make sure you hold it up for Oh her. my gosh. <laughs> oh my baby. Baby. Okay, stick it in her mouth. She's very excited. Hold it up. I am. <laughs> there you go. Like, normal calves are usually like 50, 60 pounds. So the normal calf weight is about 75 pounds. She probably weighs about 50 pounds, maybe. She's pretty small. They're also like a little bit bigger than this too. Yeah, well, all of this is part of, you're gonna help her get bigger. And big and strong. Oh, is she full already? No, nope, she's trying to get your knee. <laughs> she's so excited. But she's still learning how all this stuff works, right? Can she not see that well? Well, maybe she can't see that well. Maybe she's just not used to it yet. Okay, make sure you turn the bottle every once in a while so that... Oh, right, yeah. yeah. Remember how we have to do that? I don't. <laughs> the nipple actually get sucked flat, and by turning the bottle, we break that pressure on the nipple and allow the milk to flow. Oh my gosh, she's so hungry. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, she got a mustache. Milk mustache. <laughs> she's very excited. So did you put mom back into the field? Yes, mom went back out in the field with her, with her brother. 
So she's been taking care of her brother just fine. Mm -hmm. And we get to take care of her. Yay! So my mom told me we're going to do a blood test on her when she's older. So we yep. can see that she has babies or not. Right. Exactly. And if uh, she's not going to be able to, we're just going to sell it. Is she pooping? I think she's pooping. I think I smell cat poop. I definitely smell poo. She got so excited she pooped. <laughs> Is that it? Are you hungry? Is there any left? I don't know. What in the bottle, sweetie? Is there any left in the bottle? I don't think there's anything left. I think she's just suckling on air. Well, then let's not let her suck on air, because that'll give her a tummy ache. Yeah. Oh okay. my okay. gosh. We gotta put her back she's in her house. She's so hungry. <laughs> Come Take on. her back inside. Oh my gosh. Come on. All right. You guys have a nice night. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs> she's trying to eat me. She's trying to eat you. Are you guys having fun? Yeah, we're having so much fun. Like she's oh, trying to. Like she's trying to eat me. She's probably still a little hungry, but we don't want her to eat too much. So. <laughs> Hungry. She likes having somebody to play with, too. Run around with you. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Give us an exercise. There you go. Yay. And a, like, I don't know how big this pen is. It's not very big. Okay. I gotta go. It's not gonna let me leave. <laughs> I gotta go. Play with Ethel. Ethel, what do you think about having a, a neighbor? Are you cool with that? Tell us with your ears. Her ears are back. She's not very happy. Can I come see her in the morning? Yes, you can. Uh, so, Kenzie, what is your favorite part of calving season now? It's either waiting for my cow to have a calf or bottle calves. <laughs> for bottle calves. So, <laughs> Bambi is your cow. Uh -huh. She is due any time now. Yes. And she also has another important date coming up, doesn't she? April 17th is her birthday. Is Bambi's birthday. <laughs> and I'll be giving you a day off on that day. You're going to give me a day off? Uh-huh. How is that? I'm going to be filming for you. You're going to film for me mm -hmm. on the 17th? Yes, Easter. Which will be Bambi's birthday. Uh -huh. And what else do you have planned? Well, we're going to do a giveaway for a happy birthday Bambi t-shirt. Cool. Then you designed it yourself? Yes, I designed it myself. Awesome. And I can't wait to show everybody once we get it all done. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Well, guys, that's pretty much it. We've got to wash up bottles and wash the blender and get all that stuff all reset for tomorrow when Marty gets another bottle. Yeah, in the morning or like? In the morning, yeah. Okay. And uh, this will continue. We'll have a bottle calf all summer long mm -hmm. until we figure out what we're gonna do with her. And I'm gonna love her and I'm not gonna be able to get rid of her. It's gonna be tough, but it's part of life. Is she gonna be like the size of Hope? She's gonna be big. <laughs> I mean, like Hope's still like small. Yeah, that's true. Who <laughs> knows? I don't know. I honestly don't know. We, we have no idea, but We'll decide when we get there. We'll mm -hmm. find out what happens. Until mm -hmm. then, we'll give her the best life we can. Yes. And we'll take care of her. Yes. And make sure she's happy. Uh huh. And let her teach lots of people about where their food comes from, right? Because they're going to come feed her. They're going to hang out with her. She's going to be in the petting zoo. Uh huh. Like all the kinds of like mascots. They are kind of like mascots. We have a mascot every year. <laughs> that we do. This year, Marty. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Thank you very much for hanging out with us once again here on the 30 and 30. We're we have 30 videos in 30 days and the 24 hour live stream coming up at the end. Bambi's birthday on the 17th mm -hmm. and a t-shirt designed by Mackenzie to give away. Mm -hmm. So lots of cool stuff still on the way in the 30 and 30 foot. Come along with us as we explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary right here on our Wyoming Life. life.